What's up, Patreon? So today we're going to talk about appendix carry at 4 o'clock. I don't want you to take this the wrong way. This is not a video on why you should not appendix carry. This is why I don't appendix carry and the why behind it. Now, if you're watching this and there's a couple, and like you're an appendix carry person and it's your deal, awesome. Uh, but if I start to bring up some points and you're like, hmm, well then maybe it's time to just rethink it just a little bit, okay? I've been forced to carry appendix due to a burn a while back and obviously I tried it through training and I always come back to the 430 position. So obviously it's a plastic gun, there's no holsters just for ease. I'm going to bring Kim in here in a little bit and I'm show you some other stuff that's important. But to begin with appendix just in general, this is forward position, okay? Uh, for one, I typically carry a large gun about this size. Uh, in fact, my duty gun is this size minus that much of the barrel, it's a G45. Okay, and so it's not comfortable for me at all, okay? But really, it's not about a comfort thing. Uh, the main driving purpose for why I don't carry this is for defensive purposes, okay? So let's just talk about this a little bit. So in every class, uh, every defensive pistol class, we, we talk about this throughout the three. We really de uh, get in depth in, in defensive pistol three. But we have to take this from a realistic context, okay? So in real life, there's a good probability that I'm going to be in some type of physical altercation prior to my gun coming out. You have nothing else to create that space in order to access my weapon, okay? Now, of course, it's concealed and so forth, but let's just look at some basics, okay? So I'll bring Kim in a minute, but for now, let's just, uh, let's just imagine there's a person in front of me, okay? So if I'm here and I'm in some type of confrontation, Note where the gun is, all right? Now, let's assume that it's covered up and so forth. <clears throat> and of course, we all know, the moment I go to get a firearm or weapon of some sort, the other person isn't going to sit there and wait, right? <clears throat> They're going to see this action potentially, or somebody else, or maybe somebody I didn't notice, and now I'm in this, in this struggle. But for this, this raw data, if you will, if I, someone's in front of me, and I mark the gun here, and I take a big, giant step back with my right foot, okay? I haven't really moved. I mean, let's be realistic here. I haven't really moved the gun that much, maybe a foot or so, and it's still basically in the front of me, all right? Uh, now, if I take the same step, nothing weird or different, and I put it back here where I normally carry the gun, in the four o'clock, and you can kind of see, even without a holster, which we would never do, but I'm just saying, you can see a contours of my body. If I had a t-shirt over this, even this one, it'd be pretty concealed. Okay. Now, same spot now, so if someone's in front of me, just from this point alone, I've now moved the gun back, you know, a good foot, okay, from my, from my person. Now, if I take that same giant step back, okay, so where I was, so the, the gun was here, and now I take that step back, I move the gun all the way back here just by blading my body. So now it's literally the furthest thing from this uh, person, okay? So just by doing that one step back, I already move that tool further away from them, okay? So that's one of the one of the basic reasons that I want that. Uh, now, if I go back here, notice that when I do this movement, I'm still keeping it away from the person that is is, a, is the assailant or whatever the case is. Uh, whether I grab it or change my mind or whatever the case is, um, I have that option. If I bring the gun up front here, okay, my hands are here. So if somebody just puts their hands on top, they're already kind of jamming me in there, right? So I got to start backing up and trying to move around and maybe going back is not the best option. Here I have that, I could maybe abandon it, I don't know. But for them to get to this gun, they've got to reach all the way around, which gives me a lot of tools here that I can utilize. Uh, one thing we'll talk about is an underhook, right? So my hand in law enforcement, anytime I would go hands on with someone, I'm always trying to get my right arm underneath their left arm, so that way they can't access my firearm as well, right? So same thing in, in any other t context. Uh, so the movement of the gun, that's a big one. Uh, the other issues I, or the other reasons I, I don't like, as I'm going to show you here in a second, is that confrontations can end up on the ground and most likely will. So let's look at um, some of the things that we would encounter, and I'll bring Kim in for this. Here we are in a, in a grounded position, and a couple things here. Well, I'm going to take the gun out of context for a second. Uh, if, just move towards the, the front there. So if I were in the situation, just because I'm on the ground doesn't necessarily mean I'm at a major disadvantage yet. I have a lot of tools, so in jiu-jitsu we use these a lot. Uh, this is referred to as standing in base, whatever the case may be. And essentially what I'm doing here is I'm leaning on my elbow and I'm using my foot as a deterrent. So if a person was trying to advance towards me, I can use my tools here. I mean, I can roll over 
to the other side and use my tools here. And basically I'm using my large muscles to, to, to keep somebody back. Now, provided I had a firearm out here, uh, obviously I can use those as well as tools to keep the person away and then possibly uh, use it to defend myself. But let's talk about uh, a case where someone's already on top. All right, so I'm gonna put this in the appendix position. All right, so Kim's gonna be my assailant, much better than my normal opponent, so I'll put it that way. So here's this person here. Now think about from this position here, I guess we're making a new type of video. <laughs> Uh, from this position here, realistically, this person's obviously going to try to like punch me, right? So I'm here trying to defend myself. So where are my hands now, right? They're going to be up here. Now, realistically, Kim could feel that there's a this is getting weird <laughs> that there's a gun down here, okay? Uh, and so now this is more of a 50-50, right? So there's a gun here, and I don't have any advantage over her keeping it secured. Uh, she doesn't really have a major advantage, but so we're kind of equal. So we're both kind of fighting for the gun here, and she's on top. Keep in mind the other thing about this position is if Kim can reach my face, okay, from, from the ground, if I go all the way down, I still can barely reach hers. That's one of the advantages of, of mount. So here, there's not much I can do. Now, here, just back up a little bit so I can move this. So if I go to four o'clock, number one, people say, well, it's, it's hard to access. Well, I can still access it, but in this case, I probably don't want to access it. In fact, what I want to do is I want to roll onto the gun, okay? So that if Kim's, my opponent's on top of me, they can't go ahead and get my gun out. So now, if she's going to try to strike me or whatever, I can still use my tool to defend myself. And for those that take jujitsu, there's a ton of things I can do. I don't want to get into that. What I'm saying is I can still keep my hands up, I can roll on my gun, and I can protect it. Okay? So that's what I like about the 4 o'clock, or 4.30. And of course, if I do create any kind of space, so just back up, back up. So if I do create any kind of space here, I can still access my firearm if I had to. Okay, so it doesn't make it so I can't get it, but I can use it to kind of protect myself uh, if I needed to. So that's kind of the big deal when it comes to working on the ground with the with the appendix and versus four o'clock. Awesome. Yeah, so you can get it out again one more time from it being on your back because a lot of people think you can't. Okay. All right, true four o'clock position here. I'm on my back completely. Uh, I can keep my knees up or not. If I drop my leg, it makes no difference, but I'm going to reach back, grab my gun, and draw it out. Now, obviously, I have to be clear of my legs as I come up. Again, something you'll do in training. Probably one of the more interesting videos you'll see Kim and I make. There's another channel we're going to bring. No, I'm just kidding. So, anyway, all humor aside, that's kind of my deal for appendix versus 4 o'clock and why I choose it. Again, I also find it more comfortable. Yes, I can access it easily in a car without undoing my seatbelt. Uh, and we'll, maybe we'll do a video if you want to see that. It's really not big, that big a deal. So again, I'm not trying to do, discourage anybody who's sold on appendix. Just want to give you some food for thought. Remember, it's always been judged by 12 and then carried by 6.